your family day? God is blessing your family this morning in a strange way in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I welcome you to this covenant family day. Service where God has designed for the blessing of every one family represented here. Our prophetic team for the month, which you have been riding on, is thanksgiving, preserves, multiplies, and perfect our blessings. Can I hear somebody say that again in agreement? Say it like somebody who is taking all those blessings now. Now personalize it to yourself right now. Hallelujah. And in our Sunday services, our teaching has been on the subject of understanding the wonders of thanksgiving. We are looking at part two this Sunday. Understanding the wonders of thanksgiving. And specifically, we are looking at part 2A in this service. Understanding the wonders of thanksgiving. Whatever you don't understand, you can't take the maximum blessings. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15, good understanding, give it favor. Give it favor. Release the blessings. Give it breakthrough. Give it sound testimonies. Good understanding. But the way of transgressor is hard. When you don't understand any subject, it becomes a tradition. It becomes, you do it religiously. You are just doing it. You don't know the power that is in it. So you do it as a routine. And that's what many saints of God, that's why they have not yet taken their testimonies or scriptural principles. Why? Because they lack the understanding. And so, the power in it cannot be released. They do it like a, a routine. They say, make we thank God. Make I join them. Make them know, say, I'll be rebel. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I'll be, I know thank you. They don't understand what it contains. It is an understanding of the power it contains that releases the blessings. That's why we've been having that teaching. Every genuine thanksgiving we always lead you to a point of praise. And that ushers in God's presence in our lives for multiple testimonies. You can't truly be thankful and it won't show Oh, sometimes they say, everybody lift up your, your, your voice, lift up your hands and thank God. And some people just stand like that. You just see from their face, from everything, they are quarreling with God. Lord, I thank you. I praise the Lord. It's not something that you can hide. If it is truly in your heart, it will show. It will show. Oh, let's praise God. And you are not moving. Nothing is showing that you are grateful to God. Thanksgiving is not just what you do with your mouth. It's from your heart and it affects every other part. <laughs> Praise God. So when you see some people jumping, you see some people dancing, you see some people on their own just something is turning inside of them. Turning inside of them. Genuine Thanksgiving will lead you to praise. Hallelujah. We lead you to praise. Genuine thanksgiving will lead you to praise. God can never say no to thanksgivers. You want a supernatural turnaround, change your position. That's the key. It looks small, but it's powerful. 
powerful. Looks small, but it is powerful. Sometimes you see some very big vehicles. But what is the engine that is inside? Some you see some very small vehicle. It looks small from outside, but heavy engine. Praise the name of So it's not the physical size that determines the strength or the power of that vehicle. It is what is inside. The same thing. Thanksgiving looks small. It looks simple, but it's powerful. Powerful. Praise the name of the Lord. Powerful. It brings about supernatural turnaround in any life. Paul and Silas were in the prison. And it looks as if there was not going to be any way for them. But as they engaged these two, their situation was turned around. Somebody's situation is running around today. That situation, that negative situation in that your family is turning around today. If you believe it, shout it louder. Amen. But what is Thanksgiving? What is Thanksgiving? Number one, it is a celebration of the act of God in our lives. A celebration of the acts of God in our lives. Psalm 92 and verses 1 to 2. The Bible says, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name. O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. And when we do that, what happens? Psalm 34, verse 1 to 6, see what the psalmist says. As his own definition of thanksgiving, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exhaust his name together. When I do that, God will always appear. I sought the Lord and he heard me. Why will he not hear? Thanksgivers can never be rejected. And deliver me from all my fears. But they looked unto him, their faces were lightened, and they were not ashamed. This poor man cried. And the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. You see all those videos, deliverances, all those testimony? Was because he consciously blessed the Lord. He gave God the glory. And God manifested himself in diverse areas. So, Thanksgiving is a celebration of the act of God in our life. What you celebrate is what you attract. When you celebrate the act of God, you can't see the hand of the devil. What you celebrate is what you attract. What you celebrate, when you celebrate the act of God, it keeps multiplying. It keeps multiplying. That's what Thanksgiving is. Lord, I thank you for that great deliverance. If it is not for you, where would I have been? Just your hand. I thank you. You are the one. You are celebrating that act. Lord, I thank you in my family that we never suffer any lack. You have been our supplier. You have been our Jehovah El Shaddai, ever sufficient. Lord, we celebrate you. God ensures that you never see lack. Praise the name of the Lord. Whatever you celebrate is what you keep attracting. Whatever you celebrate is what you keep attracting. Thanksgiving is a celebration, a deliberate, conscious celebration of the act of God in our lives. So you don't take anything that God has done in your life for granted if you don't want to be granted. You magnify every act of God that people call little. That gets God provoked to do more. God, say, I've not even started. Just this small thing that I did, see the way he's thanking me, see the way he's celebrating that act. He stretches his hand. That's one of the secrets of this great commission. Every good thing God does is being celebrated. Is being celebrated throughout this month. Now you see the way we have been thanking God. Thank, we have not stopped thanking God for 40 years of impactful ministry. 
God is excited. Why will he not give us more testimonies? That's what Thanksgiving is. Celebrating the act of God. Consciously celebrating the act of God. When you celebrate the act of God in your life, you see more of his marvelous acts. Thanksgiving is also what you do all the time, consciously, and in all situations. That's what Thanksgiving is. In Psalm 34, the psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. Not only when things are good and rosy. At all times. At all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. There are some people, the only time you see them smiling and rejoicing, something has entered their pocket. Praise the name of the Lord. So you can tell from their temperature, you can tell, you can tell. You can tell. And then when you see them smiling and you say, oh boy, they will like say something, no enter that guy hand now. And then the next minute you see them looking so tensed. They say, everybody rise up, lift up your voice and thank God for everything. They say, for what? What do you do? They say Thanksgiving is what you do. Not when anything has happened to make this happen. Or what of the one where I don't do? Praise the name of the Lord. At all times, in all situations, at all times, in all situations. And that's why in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18, Paul speaking to the Thessalonian church said, In everything. Give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, in everything, in every situation you find yourself, give him thanks. Hallelujah. Every time, give him thanks. That's what Thanksgiving is, celebrating the act of God in our lives. Every time, every time, that's what provokes the blessings. And the devil's strategy is to prevent people from seeing the act of God so that they can shut their mouth. That's the same strategy. He prevents people from seeing the act of God. He blocks their eyes. He closes their eyes. That's why most of the times, people only see what God has not done. They seldom see the things he has done. And it's a devil strategy to block their mouth from giving God thanks. Because when you see the act of God, you must thank him. You must praise him. When you see, you can't see and not give him thanks. In Exodus chapter 14, concerning the children of Israel, verses 30 and 31, Exodus chapter 14, and verses 30 and 31, thus says the Lord, thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hands of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. They saw. And Israel saw, they saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. They saw the act of God. And what did they do? Chapter 15, verse 1, which is a continuation of that chapter 14. And then sang Moses and the children of Israel, this song unto the Lord and say, saying, I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horse and his riders, they have been thrown into the sea. You can't truly see what God has done. You won't thank him and sing his praises. So what the devil do? He shows you the things that have not yet happened. And then take your eyes over the things, the great, great things that God has done. Because you have asked of God for that money, that capital, to add to your business, to expand your business, and looks as if he, that money has not come. Are you not finding it difficult to thank him? But the devil won't show you the blessedness of your life. The God that has kept you alive. He won't show you those escape against your life. He won't show you those many deliverances concerning your destiny. He won't show you how God delivered you. From sicknesses. How that God has kept you in sound health. You will have no cause.
to run about to hospitals from one place to the other. He won't show you that one. And that's why I tell people, if you want to know how to thank God well, after the service, just visit the hospital. And then plead with them to allow you to enter the emergency ward. You will come back with a song. Praise the name of the Lord. People are there. They are not talking about money. They are not talking about wife. They are not talking about husband that they are looking for. They are not talking about business. They are struggling for their life. And almost every minute or every hour, somebody dies. And here you are, enjoying life. Woke up by yourself. Dressed by yourself. You even put powder. And you didn't forget your cap. And now you are smiling in God's presence. Will you, know, will you not shout and say, thank you, Jesus? That's what Thanksgiving is. Celebrating the act of God in our life. What is Thanksgiving? It is ascribing all the glory to God for where we are. Ascribing all the glory to God for where we are. Hallelujah. You must know that where you are now is not by your power. Not by your might. And that's why he deserves all the glory. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10, Paul Acknowledge that very strongly. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Don't think I'm a superman. His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. Even though I labored more abundantly than they all. But don't mistake my labor for where I am now. Yet not I. But the grace of God which was with me. The grace of God. The grace of God. The grace of God. Genuine transgiver must recognize that every good thing around them is God. The grace of God. Ascribing all the glory to God. Ascribing all, not some. All, 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 all. Anytime somebody looks at you and says, Oh, my brother, I can see you are doing very well in business. Quickly say, thank God it is God. And say it a minute. Not that you will say it with your mouth, but inside something is telling you, say, boy, I day, I two day. Ah, this is my head, now business guru. Praise the name of the Lord. Or oh, secretly in your heart, you are feeling big. Feeling big. Feeling big. They say, ah, my sister, the way you presented, did that presentation in the office, I can just see raw intelligence. And then you two smile and laugh. Oh, well, you know, in our family, we are we're intelligent in our family. In fact, that one where I won't talk, I never even see anything. Now, because no time, more. I still get waiting and won't talk. Because the thing, they there, they there. Praise the name of the Lord. Just like when you look at a lady and say, oh, you are looking very beautiful. And you say, hey, I never even put powder on. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. You must recognize that anything good is God. And any time in your heart with your mouth, recognize it so and mean it so. Praise the Lord. Don't let people Steal away God's presence from you. Herod the king, they were praising him. Oh, when he spoke, they clap, 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 clap. I said, this is not the voice of man. This is God. He shook his head. He said, you have well spoken. He may not have said it with his mouth, but in his heart. That's what he's saying. Don't let the applause of men drive away God's presence from you. Any good thing around you, go back inside the room and consciously give God thanks. Praise the name of the Lord. Paul said, it is the grace of God, not me. I played my part, but every other thing is God. Give him all the glory, not some. All the glory. In 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 9, for by strength shall no man prevail. Hallelujah. By strength shall no man prevail. It's not by strength. It's not by power. It's not by your might. 
only by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 9 and verse 16, Romans 9, 16, it's not he that will it. It's not he that run it. You can run. It's not he that will it or run it. But it's God that showeth mercy. Without the mercy of God in our lives, everything will be messy. Without the mercy of God, everything will be messy. Praise the name of the Lord. Scattered, uninviting, unattractive. It's just the mercy of God. It's just the mercy of God. It's just the mercy of God. Except the Lord builds they that labor, they labor in vain. Except the Lord watches over the city. The watchmen, they stay awake in vain. Except the Lord. Except the Lord. No matter how you walk, it is God's favor that flavors your labor. That's what you call mercy, unmerited favor. Praise the name of the Lord. So give him all the glory. Give him all the glory. Give him all the glory. Hallelujah. Until you appreciate the present, you are not qualified for the future. Until you appreciate the present, the future is not guaranteed. Until you appreciate the present, the future is not guaranteed. The future that is more colorful is not guaranteed. Hallelujah. Please stop thinking too much of yourself. Hallelujah. We are blessed not because we are the best. We are blessed not because we are the best. We are blessed not because we are the best. It is only his grace. And that's why we must give him thanks. Hallelujah. What are we thanking God for? Number one, for his faithfulness in our lives. For his faithfulness in our lives. Lamentation chapter 3 and verses 22 to 23. The Bible says, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Because his compassion faileth not. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. It is of the Lord's mercy. His compassion, his faithfulness can never fail. Great is his faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. It is his faithfulness that has made us escape the fiery dart of the devil. His faithfulness. In Psalm 89 and verses 1 to 2, the psalmist says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. I will sing, I will sing. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Thy faithfulness shall thou establish in the very heaven. His faithfulness. It is the faithfulness of God that has kept you and I alive. If it is not God, where will you have been today? If it is not the faithfulness of God, where will you have been today? The enemy never wanted to give you and I a chance. Hallelujah. The wicked forces in your family never wanted to give any member of your family a chance. The faithfulness of God. They did everything to want to bury your family. But see how God has glorified your family today. The faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. In Psalm 124 and verses 1 to 8. Psalm 124 and verses 1 to 8. He says, if it has not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it has not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, ah, they will have swallowed up us quick because we are defenseless. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our souls. Then the proud waters has gone over our souls. They will have run over us. But blessed be the Lord who had not given us as prey to their titi. Hallelujah. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we escape. If that is your testimony, shout a louder amen. amen. The faithfulness of God. The faithfulness of God. We are not strong men, but God's faithfulness has pulled you and I true thus far. In Acts chapter 26 and verse 22, we continue this day. We continue this day by the help of God, by the faithfulness of God. Have one therefore obtained his help. I continue this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophet and Moses did should say. There is no any new thing I'm doing. There is no anything we know how to do. But God just bless him. 
blessing your family, blessing you as an individual. Just his faithfulness. His faithfulness. Why don't you lift up your hand and wave again to him and say, Lord, I celebrate your faithfulness. Come on, shout it, Lord, I celebrate your faithfulness. Hallelujah. What are we thanking God for? Number two, why? We are thanking to keep the anointing fresh on our lives. To keep the anointing fresh. In Psalm 89, verses 20 to 22, I found David, my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him, in whom my hand shall be established, my arm also shall strengthen him. For the enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. Now we beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. Hallelujah. It is fresh oil that brings about continuous progress in life. That's God's desire for our life. God wants us to have continuous pro progress, continuous breakthrough, continuous testimony. In Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, for the path of the just man is like a shining light that shines more and more unto a perfect day. More and more unto a perfect day. Continuous testimony, continuous breakthrough. Hallelujah. Where you are now is tired of you. The next face is waiting. Praise the name of the Lord. That testimony is stale. God wants to give you another one. That breakthrough, that new breakthrough is just waiting for you now. You must know how to do, what to do. It takes fresh oil for continuous breakthrough. And it takes thanksgiving to command this fresh oil. Continuous breakthrough is a function of fresh oil. And thanksgiving is what ushers in this fresh oil. Hallelujah. Why are we thanking him? What are we thanking him for? Number three, for rendering our enemies helpless. For rendering our enemies helpless. For rendering our enemies helpless. The enemy will always fight. Because life is a battle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Against principalities and power. Spiritual wickedness in dark places. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. We wrestle. It's a present continuous tense. We fight. We wrestle. We wrestle. So they are there every time, fighting to pray, oh God, don't let there be enemies on scriptural prayer. He said, the enemies are always there. You only need God to keep them and fight for you. In 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12, he says, fight the good fight of faith. Fight, fight. There will always be a fight. Life is a battleground. It's warfare, it's not fun fair. It's warfare. Fight. That everything is fight. 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 That's why when a newly born child is just born, very humble, innocent from heaven, cool air from heaven, no any struggle, enjoyment from heaven and all that. So as soon as the child is born, he still wants to continue that way. <laughs> they will tell him. <laughs> Location have changed, you. Oh. Uh, the child is still calm and quiet and pretending as if he didn't hear. The nurse were carrying him. I say, location have changed, you are not hearing what I'm saying. Bye, bye, bye. Until the child start crying. I say, that's what we do here. We fight. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. That is to say, even if you don't offend anybody, they will fight you. <laughs> they will fight you. So you need God to keep your enemies helpless. And that's what, why you need praise and thanksgiving. In Psalm 92 verses 1 to 2, it's a good thing to give God thanks and to sing his praise. And what happens from verse 10 to 12? He said, when you do that, when you engage a lifestyle of praise, my horn shall thou exalt it like the horn of the unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My eyes shall see the desires of my enemies. And my ears shall hear my desires of the wicked that rise up against me. So when you live a lifestyle of thanksgiving, God makes your enemies helpless. God keeps fighting your battle. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, you know the story. Three nations came against the children of Israel. And then in verse 17, 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 17, when they saw the might of these three nations, ah, 
They didn't know what to do. And then they turned to God. Oh God, our eyes are on you. This is not our battle. This is not a battle we can ever fight. And then God responded to them. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Just set yourself. It's my battle. Stand you still and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them. For the Lord will be with you. It will be his fight. He will fight for you. And when God fights for you, he makes you a spectator in your own battle. In verses 20 to 22, see what happened. Verses 20, 22 Go to verse 22, verses 22 to 24. He said, and when they began to sing and to praise, can you see where thanksgiving and praise comes in? That's the key, that is the weapon. The Lord set ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Manseah, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Manseah, they faced themselves, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. You didn't understand that picture. There are three nations and they came together to want to fight the children of Israel. God set them against themselves. So one nation began to attack one. Seir began to attack one. And they started attacking themselves as nations. And when they finished that fight, they now faced themselves. The same people of the same nation, they now face themselves. As we don't kill all of them now, wait, you too, why, wait, what do you they do? Why do they look me like that? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. They now turn to themselves and began to fight themselves and until they, everybody destroyed themselves and the children of Israel were just watching as spectators. That's how God will make you a spectator in your own battle in the name of Jesus running after that family, they will soon come to you. They want people dead. You had a testimony that was read. Death. Sequential death in some family. Because of evil of men. Until that plague stopped. All those going everywhere. Bringing about, you know, incessant death in your family. By these blessings today, they will be the one dying in the name of Jesus. That's what Thanksgiving can do. It renders our enemies helpless. In Psalm 24 and verses 4 to 7. Psalm 23, sorry, verses 4 to 7. Psalm 23, he said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He says, verse 5, Thou preparest a table before me. In the presence of my enemies, thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. <laughs> he says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I like that picture. God was going to humiliate your enemies. And what did he do? He said, he calls all your enemies. And now set a table, a banquet. With all manners of assorted, of good things. And they tell you, oh yeah, just be feasting. And then you are just carrying anything you want on the table. Your enemy is watching, they are looking, but they are helpless. And then you carry one big fat chicken. You take it up, you see the eye of your enemy watching you. Look at the chicken and tear it. Is the name of the Lord? Yeah. You know when, when we are small, small, and then you find small, small, some small, small children who are very covetous. I've told you that story before. You don't use cane to beat them. It won't work. There is a better cane to use. You know, there are some children like that. When they see anything, it must enter. Their, they, they will follow it. You, they will go there and stand like this and be looking at you. So for such children, you just you keep them there, they are looking at you. You hold it, you are eating it small, small. You don't rush it. Let them be watching you be eating it small, small. And then you can even send them, go and bring me water. 
He will run because he will think he has benefit that you will give him. And he come back, we are eating it. He's watching how the thing is going now. He's going now. You send him again. Go and bring spoon. They are, he said, they won't give me food now. He comes back, he just stays more. Then he's watching it. As the thing is decreasing, his mood is changing. <laughs> and then when it remains the last bite, you hold it. You look at his face. You call his name. I don't want to call anybody's name here. <laughs> you look at him. Aparoro. He will quickly answer you. Yes. Thinking you say he should come. Say okay. Okay. What him be your papa name? He said, okay, now, okay, now, be cool. It's okay, and a good name, oh. What not? You chop yesterday. He said, yes, okay. You now look at you, look at his face. You now throw it inside your mouth. As you throw it, the man will just say, eh! Hallelujah. That's what God has done for our enemies. When they want to swallow us up, when they think we shouldn't leave, God prepare a feast for us before their presence and they could not touch you. When they think you should be going down, that's where you are going up. When they think you should be dead, that's where you are celebrating. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus. He makes the enemies helpless. 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 That's why we are thanking him. You know so many battles that God has fought for you in your dream. You know how many arrows that flies. If God shows you, not even touching you, yeah, you are seeing it, we will die before the arrow come. You are walking on the road and arrows are coming. We, how many do you want to dodge? One is coming like this, you dodge. Another one is coming, this is you dodge on the road. When will you get to where you are going? There is one flying in the day. There is one flying in the night. Praise the name of the Lord. God makes our enemies helpless. That's why we must thank him. Various battles that the world of darkness have celebrated your death. But instead, God did not only kept you alive, it kept you flourishing. Can you shout and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shout again and say, thank you, Jesus. thank you, Jesus. What are the benefits of Thanksgiving? Number one, Thanksgiving engenders access to divine presence. You don't have access to his presence without Thanksgiving. Psalm 100 and verse 4, enter into his gate with thanksgiving. And then is caught with praise. And then you now meet him. Thanksgiving ushers you into God's presence. So live your life a thanksgiver. Live your life a thanksgiver. Psalm 16 and verse 11. He said, Psalm 16 and verse 11. That will show me the part of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand there are pleasures forever. Hallelujah. It is God's presence that guarantees his pleasures. God's presence that guarantees his present. When somebody is celebrating anything, you give him gift, present. So it is God's presence that releases his present. The good things, the pleasures of God is accessible through his presence. And that's true transgiving. Praise the name of the Lord. Transgiving guarantees God's presence in our lives. And number two, thanksgiving gives us continuous breakthroughs. It makes breakthrough our identity. When thanksgiving becomes your lifestyle, breakthrough becomes your new identity. Breakthroughs. In Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 to 19, he said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall there be fruit in the vine, the labor of the olive shall fail, the field shall yield no meat, no flock shall be cut off from the flood. There shall be no head in the store, everything negative. He says, yet, this is the connecting point. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like the hinds feet. He will turn everything around. He will make me to walk upon my high places. That's the turning point. When Thanksgiving becomes your lifestyle. You enjoy breakthrough unlimited. You keep changing levels. 
Breakthrough will become your new identity. You are not struggling. Yes, you are advancing. Because you understand the secret of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So, Thanksgiving turns your life to breakthrough. You enjoy the profit of the earth. The earth yield forth naturally a profit to you. In Psalm 67 and verses 5 to 7. It says, let the people praise thee. Let the people praise thee. Then what will happen? The year at we eat forth are increased. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. And all the nations of the earth, the people shall bless us. And all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Fearful blessings. When thanksgiving becomes your lifestyle, fearful blessing becomes your new identity. The earth we eat forth are increased. Which means the earth will just open up. We, Places that are closed, doors that are closed against people, they open up on their own accord. Only imaginable breakthroughs and testimony becomes your portion. When thanksgiving becomes your lifestyle. From today, there shall be no mumbling and grumbling in your life. Receive the grace to be a continuous thanksgiver. Thanksgiving will become your lifestyle from today. In the name of Jesus, can I hear you louder? Amen. Shout it, thank you, Jesus. Well, today is our covenant family day where God is visiting our family in a most unique way. In Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22, the blessings of God makes rich and added no sorrow. It is the blessings of God that distinguishes every family. The blessings of God. The blessings of God is what counsels every evil manipulation of the devil in our lives. So this morning, by the blessings of God that shall be released upon the families, every manner of satanic manipulation shall be swallowed up in your family in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I'd like you to know, God's people, that God instituted the family system at creation. God is a lover of family. In Genesis chapter 1 and verses 26 to 28. Genesis chapter 1 and verses 26 to 28. And God said, let us make man in our own image. After our likeness and let them have dominion. Over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air and over the cattle. And over all the earth and over every creeping thing. That creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. That's the family. God already instituted the family. He saw you and I long ago. And God said unto them. Be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea. Over the fowl of the earth. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God blessed them. The blessings of God. The blessings of God. God set a seal of blessing upon the family system. God bless them. God bless them. That is what your family is expected by God to reflect blessings. No more woes. No more evil. No more negative patterns. But blessing, what you should be recounting about that family is blessing. From today, it will be what God has done that people will be hearing from you. In that family, it will be blessings and blessings and blessings galore. Sound a louder amen. God did not only bless your family. No. God also intends for you, your family to be rescued. The reason why God saved you is so as to be a savior in that family. To be a savior. To be a savior. We saw how God saved Noah and his family. God rescued Noah and his family. In Genesis chapter 7 and verse 13, the Bible says, In the self same day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and three wives of his sons with them into the ark. God saved Noah and his family. So, you are not born again for your family to go to hell. 
No, you are born again for the rescue of your family. For the rescue of your family. For the salvation of your family. And therefore, Professor, any member of your family that has not experienced the saving grace of heaven, today, they are rescued in the name of Jesus. Any member of your family that is under the manipulative hand of the devil, I declare that they are rescued to the name of Jesus. God rescued Noah and his family. We also saw how God blessed Abraham and his seed after him. God did not only bless Abraham, but he seed his generations to come. So, the blessings of God upon your life is expected to be manifested in your family. And then generations and generations to come in that family. So can you see the vital role that God has placed you to play in that family? In Genesis chapter 26, 22, and verses 16 to 18, he said, and, and said, by myself, God speaking, have I sworn, see as the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing, thou hast not withhold your son, your only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. In multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sun which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemy. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. His generations were blessed. Generations after him were blessed. I decree that you will be a source of blessing to your generations in the name of Jesus. Concerning that family, there will be no more evil report in the name of Jesus. We also saw in the case of Colinius, he was saved along with his household and his kinsmen. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 24. Acts chapter 10 and verse 24. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Colinius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. Look at verse 44. Verse 44. Of the same Acts chapter 10. Why Peter yet spake those words? The Holy Ghost fell on all them which had the word. Every one of them were turned to Christ. All his household, his family, his kinsmen, everyone that mattered in that family. They were all turned to Jesus. Turned to Jesus by reason of his own contact. How are you affecting your family? Some got born again and they left their families. They are not bothered. That's the reason why God picked you in that family as a light. You can't be a Christian and your parents go to hell. Praise the name of the No. 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 You can't say you are a child of God and you allow that your sibling to go to hell. No. They were saved. And the entire household. Praise the name of the Lord. Anyone that is under the influence of the enemy that your family. That yoke is destroyed in the name of Jesus. We also saw the jailer. He was saved and his household. In Acts chapter 16 and verses 30 to 33. They brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. And they speak unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. They were all saved. They were all saved. They were all saved. You may be inside the ark. What about your family? What about your siblings? What about your kinsmen? It is time to stand for them. To, for the rescue of their soul. What must I do to rescue my family? What must I do to rescue my family? Hallelujah. Just like I said, by redemption you are ordained a savior. In Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 21, savior shall arise from Zion. Joseph found himself in the palace for one purpose, to save the children of Israel. Genesis chapter 45 verses 5 to 7. Esther found herself in the palace, not for herself. No, for the rescue of the Jews. Esther chapter 2, chapter 4, and verses 14 to 16. Esther 4, 14 to 16. And if thou altogether holds your peace at this time, 
Then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. If you refuse to do it, somebody else will do it. But it will be counted against you. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. That's the reason why you are born again. That's why God has picked you for the salvation of that family. How, what do I do for their rescue? Number one. You must stand in the gap for them. Stand in the gap. Stand in the gap for them. Know that is your responsibility. Stand in the gap. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse, 20, and verse 30. Ezekiel 22 and verse 30. I'm looking for a man who is standing in the gap. Stand in the gap and pray for your family. I sought for a man among them that should make up the gap and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. But God has found you in that family. It's located you. Stand in the gap. Pray for your family. Pray for your children. Those who, if you, in case you have any of, any wayward child that is going against the will of God, pray for your siblings. Pray that they be rescued. Take it as a project for yourself. You pray and fast because of money. Because of business breakthrough. And then you can't pray and fast for, your, for the souls of your family. Stand in the gap for them. I say, Lord, no member of my family must go to hell. I destroy that satanic yoke. Standing in the gap for them. Hallelujah. Number two, plead for mercy for your family. For the breaking of every curse that is associated. Maybe by their family background, there have been, you know, some wrong foundation, serving of idols and all manners of evil. Maybe some covenant may have been entered into on behalf of members of that family and that lineage. That's why you must plead for the mercy of God. His mercy breaks his compassion. Some families are in, suffering some generational causes because of some of those things. So break it. Plead for the mercy of God. Eh, whatever covenant that has been entered, whether knowingly or unknowingly, Lord, I declare it broken by your blood. Have mercy. Have mercy. Let your mercy speak. Reason why nobody is prospering in that family. Generational cause. Untimely death in that family. Generational cause. Why people cannot settle in their matrimonial home. Generational cause. Why eligible married people, I mean people for marriage cannot get married? Cause is at work. Plead for the mercy of God to break such yoke. Hallelujah. Number three, we must enter a covenant to serve God as individuals so as to bring an end to all those causes. We must enter a covenant to serve God. You want all round rest for that family. You put your life as a seed of service as a point of contact for the rest of that family in 2nd Chronicles chapter 15 and verses 12 to 15 they made a covenant to serve God and God gave them all around rest 2nd Chronicles 15 12 to 15 make a covenant to serve God and your household don't let your children do just anything push them to serve God do all that is in your power Praise the name of the Lord. Your household. Invest upon your family. Whether they are with you anywhere they are. Buy books. Speak to them. Let them read. Send some spiritual materials to them. Push them. Push. Just keep pushing. Just don't be discouraged. You can even send him books and all that. He calls you and says, use them now for you. I beg when a book I they look, I say, make you send me a palapala. You they send me a book. The money I need now, no be book. Don't be discouraged. It's a seat. That book, he may put that book on the shelf and not read it. One day, the Holy Spirit will hit him with something. When he goes to open that book, that may be the point where his salvation will start from. Praise the name of the Lord. Push them. Let them serve God. Let them serve God. Let them serve God. As we are serving God. Hallelujah. In Exodus chapter 4 verses 22 to 23. That was the beat, bait for the deliverance of the children of Israel. Let my people go that they may go and serve me. If your decision is to serve God, 
God will let your family go out of the hands of Pharaoh. Joshua said in Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15. Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15. He says, I have made up my mind. If it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. So make a covenant that you and your household will serve God if that's your decision. No matter the cause that the enemy has put over that family, it shall be broken. Hallelujah. And finally, open up this morning to receive every blessing that will be proclaimed upon your family. Open up. Receive it with faith. Because God is changing the story of that family for good. If you believe it, shout a louder, Amen. In Numbers chapter 23 and verse 8. Numbers 23 and verse 8. The Bible says, how can I cause whom God has not caused? How will I defy whom the Lord has not defied? In 23 and verse 23, Numbers, he said, Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and Israel, what God has wrought. It is blessings that cancels every cause. I've received commandment to bless. And whosoever is blessed, no Satan can curse. Hallelujah. No Satan can curse. Reuben was under a curse. But when a higher prophet came by Moses in Deuteronomy 33 and verse 6, let Reuben live and not die. And that curse was nullified. In Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 22, he said, Isaiah 44 and verse 22, is the Lord that confirmed the words of his servant and performed the counsel of his messenger. As I stand this morning by the unction back in this commission, every blessing that will be pronounced upon every family, it shall turn around the story of that family for good. Yeah. Whatever evil that is at work shall be nullified in the name of Jesus. As one of the sons of the prophet in this commission, and I decree concerning that your family, when God created the family, he blessed the family for the family to reflect blessing. Whatever it is that is trying to swallow up God's blessing in that family is destroyed today in the name of Jesus. I decree the escape of your family from any satanic siege in the name of Jesus. Every home that the enemy has put your family and have said that this family will never, never see any attraction. I decree your liberty today in the name of Jesus. I command an end to every satanic manipulation in any family today in the name of Jesus. Every serial death going on in that family. Every year, one, two, three people must die. I command it to cease right now in the name of Jesus. Every form of generational curse that is menacing anyone in that family today, it is hereby cancelled in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of stubbornness and waywardness in any child in that family, today I command that stony heart to be removed in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that is making people divorce in that family, no one is settling in their matrimonial home. Today, it is cancelled in the name of Jesus. I decree every marital delay in that family is turned to testimony in the name of Jesus. Every kind of hereditary disease moving on in that family, moving from one person to the other. Today, I command no more in the name of Jesus. Whatever is not making anybody rise in that family, today is terminated in the name of Jesus. The manipulative hand of the enemy that is scattering the siblings. Everybody going their way, scatter and scatter and scatter. So that the enemy, I mean, so that the family will have no color and meaning. I command a divine intervention. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of poverty in that family is caused in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of misfortune is caused in the name of Jesus. 
For that family from today, I command supernatural advancement. I release God's blessing upon you. Every almighty be married. Barrenness is destroyed. Poverty is destroyed. Supernatural prosperity in my family. From today, I command long life. I command strength for that family. Supernatural breakthrough for that family. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Everything that negative that they have said against that family is hereby reversed. The mercy of God answers for you. From today, it will be good news only for that family. In the name of Jesus, I decree nothing negative is permitted for you this week in the name of Jesus. This week will be a week of testimonies for your family. It will be a week of rejoicing for your family. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Kiara squad will be meeting after the tour service. You want to join and care for brethren. Care for God's people so that you will enjoy God's care. Join them after the tour service. In the honor entrance here, they will be meeting in Jesus' name. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Welcome to 2021. Your year of supernatural turnaround. Then, expect turnaround to become your new identity from henceforth. And let everyone say, Amen and Amen. God bless you.